Okay, we want to connect the delta G naught, not delta G, delta G naught with your equilibrium constant K. Delta G naught equals to negative RT natural log K. R is a constant 8.314. T is just your temperatures in Kelvin. K is your equilibrium constant. So the important thing here is actually the delta G naught, not delta G, is actually delta G naught. Okay, not delta G. The differences between delta G naught and delta G is that delta G naught means actually the reaction was conducted at 25 degrees C, 1 atm, but most importantly is that the concentration of all the species inside your equation equals to 1n. So the so-called the standard condition. What it really means is that imagine today you have a given reaction AA plus BB that give you CC plus DD. So if you initiate a reaction in the end it's going to reach its equilibrium. Equilibrium is always the final state of a reaction. So what you do is actually in the beginning I dumping a lot of stuff. You means actually you put a reaction in a status that is actually very far away from your equilibrium. Then eventually these things will gradually go down to the energy level of your equilibrium states. So what it means is actually the delta G naught means actually okay I prepare my reaction at a standard condition. Then I let it run. In the end, it's going to reach equilibrium. In other words, at the standard conditions, I actually put my system away from its equilibrium by a certain amount. Therefore, the energy differences is actually referring to how far away it is from your equilibrium. From that sense, you can see you can do these things for every single reaction you want to look at. Then you can actually measure the delta G naught of low things actually very easily. So that's actually how you actually start to connect the delta G naught with the equilibrium constant K. And the scientists actually realized in the very end, they realized the energy differences between the standard state to the equilibrium situation can be associated with this simple equation. So it's delta G naught equals to negative RT natural log K. Sometimes you will see in your textbook, it write in different ways. You say the K is equal to exponential negative G naught over RT. These two are equivalent. So the difference between the two is actually, if you actually divide RT on both sides and you take exponential, then this will actually go to this. Okay, I suggest you actually memorize one, not both. And you want to actually go through one example so that you know how to actually utilize this equation. Here is actually the question we want to actually go through. It says if this a reaction has a delta H naught of negative 10 kilojoules per mole and delta S naught has a value of negative 500 joule per mole per K at 298K. Assuming that delta H naught and delta S naught doesn't really change with temperature, you want to determine the temperature in degree C where the spontaneity of the reaction changes. So apparently from the questions you know you need to calculate a temperature. But what is that temperature? So how do you actually solve this? So from the question the things we can see is that it actually provides you delta H naught, delta S naught. In the beginning of the class, we say, okay, the most important equations of this chapter is actually delta G equals to delta H minus T delta S. So here they, give, it, they did not give you the delta H or delta S. Instead, they give you the delta H naught and the delta S naught. That means actually these things is at the standard condition. Why say it's okay? you can actually have this, right? You have delta H naught, delta S naught, therefore you can calculate your delta G naught. So that's actually the first thing that you want to see here. 
from here you know the delta H naught is negative 10. Be careful, okay? So typically, okay, when they give you delta H naught, they always have the unit of kilojoule. But the delta S naught always have unit of joule. So you want to actually convert everything into joule so you can actually make sure the unit are consistent. Delta H naught will be minus 10 times 1000. So I convert this into joule. Minus the temperature times delta S naught is negative 500. Okay, so you know the delta G naught is going to equal to this. Based on one of the most important equations of this chapter, at least you can write the things. So temperature is something that you want to solve. In order to solve the temperature, you need to know what? Delta G naught, right? If you know the delta G naught, then you can solve for the temperature. So what is the delta G naught? So in order to actually know your delta G naught, okay, you need to actually be able to translate this sentence. Spontaneity of the reaction changes. So what does that mean? Previous we say if you have a delta G smaller than zero, then it is spontaneous to the product side. If your delta G is larger than zero, then it's not spontaneous to the product side. What it means actually, it is spontaneous to the reactant side. From those two sentences, you should also see that. If your delta G equals to zero, that is actually the point it's going to decide which direction you need to go. Either go to a reaction or go to a product. The other way to describe the things I just say, okay, is actually it tells you that. This specific sentence actually tells you that delta G naught, okay, equals to zero. So you need to actually learn to translate this sentence. Every time you see this sentence, the spontaneity of the reaction changes that actually tells you that delta G naught equals to zero. So once you have that, then you know you can write this zero equals to negative 10,000 minus plus 500 T, right? Therefore, you know your T is going to equal 20. So the 20 is actually the unit of Kelvin. Therefore, it's going to equal to negative 253 degrees C. So it's less simple. The key is what? The key is that do you know that delta G naught is equal to delta H naught minus T delta S naught? Okay, so that's the first thing, right? Second thing is you know, okay, when the spontaneity changes, that indicates that delta G naught equals to zero. So once you have that, then you should be able to solve the temperature without a problem. So now with these things in mind, I want to say if the temperature is larger than 20K, what it means your second term is going to be the dominant term. So the second term is going to be actually positive, right? Because your delta S is actually negative. Therefore, negative T delta S become positive. Your T delta S naught is going to be the dominant term. It's going to outweigh your delta H naught. Therefore, your delta G naught is going to be positive. Therefore, you know under the conditions, the reaction is not spontaneous. On the other hand, if it's actually smaller than 20K, then it will be the opposite, right? Your delta H naught is going to outweigh your T delta S naught. Okay, therefore your delta G naught is going to become negative and it becomes spontaneous.